Hello, uh, John from Poor Man's Garage. This is uh, 1999 Kawasaki Jet Pump Part 3. Uh, okay, so I see a lot of guys, uh, they, they look at that cone and they go, um, I don't know how to get the bearing out of there. Well, it's real simple. So, I'll show you the tool that I use. So this is a slide hammer. On the end of that slide hammer is a quarter, uh, about, that's probably about a four inch, quarter inch carriage bolt. That carriage bolt will fit nicely up inside that bearing. Like that. Get an idea? Carriage bolt fits inside that bearing. So, I'm going to get you guys a uh, view of this. The cone. Okay, so get you guys a good view. Hopefully, you can see the view of the vites. Okay. Vites. Plate with a hole in it. Flat plate. Cone. Slide hammer. Carriage bolt. Goes up inside here. Like that. It hooks, up, hooks onto the bearing. Like that. This sits nice and flat on the plate. You slide this back. So you're kind of like in the middle of the voice. Alright. So now this is hooked on the bearing. Alright. Okay, so you hooked on the bearing, so go. Pull on the left side a little bit, and then pull back to the right side. So I pulled on the on the left side. Now I'm going to pull on the right side. I'm going to go back to the left side. Back to the right side. Left side. Kind of got to look at it, see which which end is coming up first. That's kind of like I got to kind of go where where it's uh where's the bearing. You kind of got to look at it. And see which end's coming out, and then you got to pull on the other side of the bearing that's not as far out to pull the bearing out even. There's the bearing. Bearing's out of the cone. Okay? No problem. Piece of cake. Other than being greasy. So, um, I, I, I like to clean up all this stuff, so I'm kind of gonna, I don't think I'm gonna bore you with cleaning all this grease out of the cone. Um, anyways, that's how I take the bearing out of the cone. Uh, you know, maybe there's a special tool, but that's this is my special tool. Uh, I'll whip the grease out of it. Uh, quarter button head. And, uh, yucky!
So just like I showed you guys, I'm going to pop the seals off the, the new bearing and uh, I'm going to grease it up and uh, I don't want to bore you with that and the video is going to be too long if I do that. Um, well, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be too long. Trying to keep these videos short. Um, well, all right, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Sure, why not? I'll bore you guys with this stuff. Why not? So I'm sure you know how to pop the seal out because I showed you how to do it. So this is the old one. Get nice practice on the old one if you want. Practice popping out, pop, popping out the seals. Practice on the old one, you know. Then, then go to the new one. All right. If you're gonna screw up, screw up the, screw up the old one rather than the new one. All right, I'd say I'm pretty good at that. So now let's uh, break out the new one. Let's see here, new one. Uh, here it is. Just so happened I got a new one. That's the little seal that goes inside your cone. Let's see how much grease they put in it from the factory, right? Let's learn together. That's the number. Maybe you guys can find that number online cheaper. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to focus or not. But that's uh, that's the one. I'll be a little bit more careful with the seal with this one. Let's see if I can get it on camera. Let's see how much they got from the factory. Grease that is. I kind of screwed it up a little bit, but it's worth it because um, these last a whole lot longer if I can grease them. So yeah, so I might scrap the seal a little tiny bit, taking it apart. You can see there, I don't know if you can see there's a little, a little bad spot right there, me digging into it, but that's okay because the grease that I'm going to put in it, for that little bump in the seal, it's not. Uh, it's gonna work far superior with the amount of grease that I put in it uh, to ruin that little little tiny lip there on the seal, which ain't nothing really. This I really didn't ruin it. To be honest with you, didn't ruin it at all. So okay, so let's put some uh, let's put some more grease in there. Then we'll uh, press it in. Oh, you can't see that. I want to bring it down a little here. Let's try over here. That's that. Grease gun. Grease gun's been clean. Let's put some grease in this bearing. And then we're going to seal it up. Last time I got grease on my shirt, nobody told me that I had grease on my shirt. I had 
agree with something, sure. Probably people are going to say, oh, you should pull the other side off uh, and grease the other side. Yeah, you're probably right. But I don't feel like it. And I, this is going to squeeze right on anyways. That'll be enough. Okay. No worries. More paper towels. More paper towels. Okay. Last time I got grease on my stuff. Oh, I got another spot of grease on me. Look at that. Shoes. Well, that's easy to do, I guess. Maybe it's a sign I'm getting fat. <laughs> All right, so. Let's see if I can get you up at the vise. So you can see what I'm doing with the vise. I think you can see what I'm doing. I might be able to see what I'm doing right there. I think so. Yuck. Grease gets everywhere. That's the thing about grease is it just whew, gets everywhere on everything. So find a socket that's just under the size of the bearing. So this is a 25. It's actually a little bit over. But I'm going to use this. It's pretty much flush. It's almost flush that you put it in. More grease. With this cone, it's it's almost flush to the top here. So the trick about it, it is is getting it straight. That's the biggest thing is getting it started straight. That's the biggest key to putting in the bearing is getting it started straight. Say like that. Looks like it started pretty good. I'm just going to open up that vice like this. You see that? You can see that, right? I should probably work on this. That way you, you can see it. Let's try that. I'm trying to work on this side of the vice so you guys can see. Let's get rid of the paper towels. Tighten it down a little bit. Bearing looks nice and straight inside the housing. So I'm actually going to push on that little tiny zerk fitting so I can get it straight in here. And I'm going to look at it, make sure that the socket is over the bearing and sitting exactly where I want. And it looks good. It looks even all the way around. It's 
got a little tilt to it. Not anymore. That looks nice and straight. I gotta check if it's even again. It's gotta go a little bit that way. Just a little tiny bit. Socket. Still gotta go a little bit. It's gotta shift a little bit this way. That looks pretty good. And it looks really crooked. <laughs> it looks like it's really crooked. So I think the bearing must have shifted. Sure did. So I'll try to tap it a little bit, see if I can't get it corrected. Pretty hard to hold this thing and get it uh, corrected. So I'm going to put it in this hole there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap. This side's down, so I'm going to tap on the other side to see if I can't even it up in the housing. Okay, so I want to hit it right there. Not much, just just a little bit. I mean, you you know when you, when you're talking straightening it out, you just nice and easy. I mean, you just all you're doing is straightening it out a little bit. You just want to get it started straight again. But that's all I want to do. It's looking pretty good. That looks pretty straight. Looks like it started pretty straight now. You know, you probably can't see that. But. All right, so let's try it again. Let's put it in there and see if we can't get it started straight again. Make sure we're in the center. Pretty tough to hold it in the center and tighten it up in the vise. We'll get her. Looks pretty good, looks pretty straight. Look at that. Oop. Let me make sure that she's straight. If she's straight, she should go in real easy. Shouldn't take much. Just want to make sure it's straight. No, it's not. It's got to be straightened out. So once again, I'm going to stick it in the hole. And I'm going to tap on the spot that's high. And the side of the bearing that's high is where I'm going to tap. Which would be right here. That straightened it right up. Try it again. It's going to be a little easier now because it's straight. I got it nice and straight, so it'll be easier for me to to line it up.
looks really straight. Just got to press in a little tiny bit more. I'll show you guys. I might have to go with a smaller, smaller. Well, that should press. That should press in further. I'm gonna say maybe a smaller socket, but I don't think so. We can see how it's almost all the way. I want to go a little further, so I'm going to go. This is a 20. Five of gold. 20, 24. You got to make sure you're not they're not pushing on the seal. Got to make sure you're pushing on the the steel, the bearing housing steel. The outside race. You got to make sure you're pressing against the outside race and nowhere else. Because if you're pressing against the seal, you're just going to ruin the seal. It's got to be on the outside race of the bearing. Oh, this is going to be a long video. A little bit more. All right, so now it's flush. Okay, flush in there now. That's that that's that bearing's flush with the housing. That's where you want it, just like that. You know what it feel? Oh, it feels wonderful. Yeah, it's absolutely okay. So, moving on to the next thing. Now, this is what the housing looks like. Remember the two seals, they go in. I showed you, explained this to you in the other video. You know how they, they go. The bearing's gonna go in there. I'm just gonna. I'm going to show you as I go along. This is, I'm not going to explain it to you a million times. So this is what it looks like though. When you push the, the bearing in this side, it's going to stop. There's a, there's a stop. It's going to stop when it's all the way in. It's going to stop on the inside of the case. Bearing goes... This way. I don't know what I do with the new. Oh, here, right, there's a. Here's the tool that I'm going to use to press the bearing in. All right. As soon as I find the bearing, we're going to press her in. I promise you. Huh. Okay. Bearing. Once again, this is the same thing. You have to get it started in the housing straight. The bearing has to be straight in the housing. That's the key, key thing. So, bearing is going to go in like this, see? Just drops in here like this. Doesn't matter which side's facing up or which side's facing down, it's the same. But the key is, is to get it started straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this thing. I'm going to use this hammer and this to start it inside the housing straight. I'm just going to tap it a little bit nice and easy, real gently, and I'm going to get it started straight. It looks pretty straight.
Okay. That looks pretty damn straight. Looks pretty damn straight. Hmm. That looks pretty straight. So now I'm going to put this in the vise. Hopefully you guys can see that vise. I'm going to do it. Just like that. Once again, I'm going to press a little tiny bit. I'm gonna look at it. Oh my god, I already screwed it up. Oh, and I can kind of feel as I'm pressing it in the vise if it's going straight or if it's going crooked. Because as I press it in, it's got a it's got a good press to it. I mean it's not, but you shouldn't have the you know, kill yourself to try to press this bearing in. It should just press in kind of easy. Not really easy, but you shouldn't have to struggle to uh, to get it to press in. It should just kind of press in nicely. As long as everything's straight, it should press in pretty nicely. And you look at it. You you look at it. You eye it up. You look at it, and you can tell if it's crooked or not. Nope. She's going in crooked. So I could just feel it that it's going in crooked. So I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna look at it. Yep, it's crooked. So now this part's down. This part's up. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to take the part that's up, tap it down. Sometimes it won't tap down. Sometimes you gotta pop it out and start over again. Depends how crooked it is. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty even. Let's try it again. Same thing. It's in here. Try to get this as even on that bearing as possible. I should probably flip it like this. This way I can see what I'm doing. That'd be even, that'd even be more better. More gooder. It'll be more gooder that way. Maybe. <laughs> Pretty hard holding it in and getting it straight and all that stuff. It'd be better if, if I had a, you know, one of them uh, Harbor Freight presses. But I don't have one. And I've been doing this for years, so I kind of got a pretty good idea on how to get it to work for me, anyways. Nope, oh, crooked. Way crooked. Way crooked. Now the other side's uh, Now the other side's down. Again, I might have to pop it out and start over again. Maybe not. Nope. I got a good feeling this time about it.
That's why I wanted to make this, make the video after I get the bearings in. <laughs> Instead of letting you guys watch me struggle with this thing this way. I don't have a press, so. It looks pretty straight. That looks pretty straight though. I could push it down maybe a little bit. That looks pretty straight. That looks pretty straight. And like I said, once you uh, once you get it straight, you see how easy it went in actually. Um, so just pressed in, no problem. Once I got it straight, she's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit smaller socket because I don't think it's in all the way. I think the socket's too big. I think it's so. This is a uh, go. Next size down, and I got to make sure the bearings bottomed up. And these are just uh, it's a giant set of Harbor Freight sockets that I kind of use for pressing in bearings. <laughs> Pretty much, that's all I use them for is pressing in bearings. Just what I'm doing right now. Yep. So I just got to make sure that it's bottomed out. But yep, she pressed it, no problem. Once I got it straight, it went right in. But I just got to make sure it's bottomed out. And I don't think it is. Yep. I felt it going all the way. Still not positive that that's all the way in. Try it. 
Now she's all the way. Now it's all the way. Oh yeah. Alright, so let's see if I can get you a picture of this. So that's probably too bright. That's the picture. Or that's the picture. That's the that's the bearing inside the housing. Okay. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's seated down all the way. Right. That's how far it's supposed to be seated. It's actually goes in quite a ways. But you, you put it in so it's bottomed out. And now this is the top part. Now, just like I said, just like I explained a little earlier, but we'll do it again so in case anybody's confused. That's the bearing. This is your bushing. Bushing sets like this. Top of the bearing. It's like that. Okay. First seal gets pushed in. So when the seal gets pushed in, it's, it's, it's gonna go over the it's gonna go over the bushing. Okay. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lubricate everything up. I like to put grease in here and here. Um, before I put everything together and there's supposed to be a space there's supposed to be a space between this and the stainless steel seal this there's supposed to be a space in between the two so what I do is I put some grease in here like that. Like that. Put some grease in like that. And what I do is I kind of run it around. Like that. Then this, the shaft, has an O-ring on it. The O-ring that I lubricate, the O-ring, once this is in place, the shaft goes into it like this, the shaft will seal in the bushing. Okay? It'll stay on the bushing. I don't want to do it now because I'm gonna, I don't, I don't want to get stuck in there. So then the bushing goes like this on the top of the bearing, like that. Now we're gonna put some grease in the seal. The seal goes like this. I want to put a little grease on there on the seal. Okay, like this. Right. And I'm gonna put a little lube on the bushing here. Yeah, I'll see if I can get it off. Now it's stuck. The grease is stuck to it. I'm gonna put a little lube on the outside of the bushing. I'll put a little lube on the inside of the bushing. So when the shaft goes in there, it uh, doesn't have a hard time going in. It's back in. Like that. So, first seal is going to go in. The rubber seal. It's going to go like this. Just like this side. Like that. Now we're going to press it in. Okay, we'll press that in. 
So again, we need another socket. It's going to fit that. Pretty good size one. Let's try a 30 Mickey Mouse, 30 millimeter. Might have to go not even close. Let's try a 32. 32 millimeter. Um, no, I don't like it. Let's try a 36. 36 is probably too big. 32 is probably too small. I might have to go with my Harbor Freight ones. We'll see here. Too big. I don't know if I like that or not. I like a better fit, so let's see if I can find something a little better. A little too big. a little bigger. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Oh, yeah. That'll get her. So, I'm going to put this in the vise. We're going to press the seal. Okay. It's like this. Seals don't go on hard. Seal's going real easy. Shouldn't take nothing to press the seal on. I'm going to put a piece of copper in there because I don't want to hurt the pump. Copper. Copper plate. I just don't like. I don't like the teeth on the. socket doesn't get jammed inside the housing that would be kind of funny but not really so I want to see what it looks like so this is what it's starting to look like here okay press them in real nice so we're going to continue the press I think it stopped because my socket might be a little too big. Not sure. <clears throat> Let me try a little bit more. All of a sudden it stopped. It shouldn't just all of a sudden stop. I don't want to get my socket jammed in there. <laughs> but I think the socket might be too big. We gotta go to the next size smaller, which was this one. Okay, that's the way it goes. <clears throat> Just gotta make sure we're pushing on the edges of the seal, not on the inside of the seal.
So all of a sudden the seal went real crooked. So we're going to tap it until we get it straightened out. All of a sudden the seal went really crooked. But it looks good now though. Sometimes you gotta do some adjusting. Let's try it again. I got her straight. Let's see if that seal goes crooked again. Might have had it crooked in the vice or something. That's going crooked again. I think that's the bottom. I think the seal is bottomed out. I would say that it is. So that seal is bottomed out. That's what it looks like after the seal is bottomed out. Okay, and that's the directions it's supposed to be. And it looks even. The seal, you want to look at it, you want to make sure it's even. And probably if you got play, So you, you don't want the seal to be pressed up against the bushing so hard that it doesn't want to doesn't want to spin. Okay, so it's got to spin. So you don't want that bushing pressed so hard against the seal that it doesn't want to spin and it's going to overheat. See, there's see you get there's a gap there. You can see see the gap. There's actually quite a bit of gap there. See how that's kind of loose? So that seal could go actually further, quite a bit further. So I'm going to press the seal in further. But that's what you got to make sure that that uh, that that seal's not pushing hard against the bushing. I think it's bottomed out. I think that's as far as it's going to go. Could be a, a lip there. There could be something that's uh, that gives the bushing room in the design. Because that seal's bottom. So there is a gap there. There should be a gap there. Because that seal's bottomed out. So it's probably a design that has room there. So now the next seal goes in. The stainless steel one. This one. That goes in just, just like that. Again, I put some lubrication here. We slide it in. Again, this, this press is in. Everything's a press. So basically, and I what I do is I, I I fill this up full of grease, somewhat more grease inside here before I press this uh, stainless steel bushing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put grease in there. I don't fill it completely up because that'll prevent me from from uh, the bushing from going in. It'll It'll have a uh, kind of like a 
it'll have pressure on it the seal won't go on right so you can only put so much grease in there just a little bit because it'll uh, it'll prevent this from pressing believe it or not the, the pressure on it will prevent it from pressing in so that's as much grease as I put on it like that but I want to pack it in there a little better so I gotta find myself uh, something to pack it in with maybe a pencil oh yeah pencils this is gonna be great Yeah, a little more grease. We'll put a little more in there. Could be a long video, boys, but at least you'll you'll know how I do. It. All right. I know the right way to put this. <laughs> the right way to build. Not that anybody has ever made a video of doing it the wrong way. I didn't see that. I didn't say it. Okay, so now this will press in like this. Again, we'll need the same socket to press that in. I'm going to use this one. I like that one better. And I'm going to start it a little bit. I'm going to start it just tapping it a little bit. If I can't get it started. so much. Alright, let's just press it in. Ooh. Plate. So now this, you basically just want to press it in until you get the snap ring in. So I got to go a little further, not much. Almost there. I'll tell you what, the socket only goes a certain way.
Okay, so that's what it looks like. Alright. That's the proper direction. The proper installation. Just far enough to get the snap ring in. Well, let's put the snap ring in. Okay. Snap ring has a flat side has a round side. Flat side goes to the seal. Snap ring is in. Make sure the snap ring is fully seated. Fully seated. Okay. And now, shaft. Okay. Make sure you got grease here. Make sure you don't got dirt here. Put some. Put some grease here. Here. Okay. Shaft. Pump. Okay, shaft goes in like this, like this, all you do is put it in there, the only thing that, make sure that that o-ring goes in, it's a little bit of a, sometimes the o-ring is a little, little sticky you gotta make sure you lubricate the o-ring up you know because you don't want to hurt the o-ring because that's part of your sealing it should it should slide in fairly easy it shouldn't be crazy but you should feel it when it's in all the way have to press it in, but it's coming out to be should just pop in make sure that make sure you don't hurt the o-ring putting it in Let's, uh, let's give it just a little push going straight. Hmm. Nothing should have to press in. I feel the O-ring. There should be a taper on the bushing, it's going to help the O-ring go on. I can feel it want to do it. Ah! There it is. Sweet! Okay. Alright, so. So that's what it should look like. Okay. So now, you got your comb, okay, what I do is I like to fill the comb full of grease. I 
or make sure you put grease on the o-ring you know we're not going to fill it full of grease we're just going to put grease on the o-ring here around here because sometimes it because it's pressure it causes it to go on hard and I've tried it several different ways I find that because here see I put grease on this so next time when I go to try to take it out it'll it'll come out so I can I can grease it once it's in with the grease fitting if I wanted to that would pressurize it <laughs> so it's better to have pressure inside the case pushing out than water coming in so now there's a damper that goes here okay there's a damper that goes on the shaft so I'll, I'll show you where the, it's called a damper all it is is just a little freaking just a little uh, like kind of like Teflon washer there it is right there. no that's not it's an empty package all right. it's here somewhere I got I'll get it for you hold on Give me a minute here. I know it's got to be here somewhere. There's there's an O-ring for that. It's not really looking for it all. Ah! Dun dun dun! Okay, that's... It's the part... Part for the damper. It's called a damper. Okay? That's what it looks like. It's a, it's a special... Uh, spacer that goes here goes here and it basically it 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 holds this shaft in place so from from popping out and it dampens the harmonics in there that's why it's called a damper it, I think it says right on the package damper okay don't forget to put this in if you don't have it in there then I don't know what to tell you now then next time when you build it, maybe put it in. Okay? It's just kind of like a it's like kind of like a rubber thing. Like see it's it's uh it's not really hard or anything. That goes right there. Just like that. Cone goes on like this. Okay, so you put your screws in, your three screws that we took out, and basically put it back together in reverse order, okay? Put it back together in reverse order. You got to put your bushings in there, got to put your shims in there, you know, the, the spacer with the bushing goes here. And then you, this this has to get torqued down to hold on. I'll look it up in the book so you guys will know. Actually, this can't go on here now. I screwed up. You got to you got to torque the impeller on the shaft. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. So, but anyways, that's how it goes together. So what you got to do is this has to go back in the vise, right? You got to torque the impeller back on it, and basically put it back together. Ah, all right, let's let's do it. Let's let's do it. Let's just uh, since I'm making it, I'm also go all the way. I was gonna say cut this video short, but you know, let's just let's just finish it up. just go all the way so now we torque the impeller onto the shaft
See what it says in the book. I'll make sure I don't get no, nothing under there or something funny going on. No, all looks good. Okay, let's look it up in the book, see what the torque spec is. Move my damper. <laughs> there, move the comb there. So let's see what the torque spec is. Torque impeller. Impeller, 72 foot pounds. Get the tool. Insert the tool. Come on, tool. It goes 22 millimeters. Get the 22 millimeters. Twenty two millimeters on the torque wrench. Set the needle to zero. Close enough. 75. Torqued up. When you take it out of the vise, make sure she still spins. Very nice. Okay. Well, now you install the damper. Yeah, we, we can actually do this a little later. Actually, now what I want to do is I want to do the shims. I'm going to do one of the shims. And I'll put the other rest of the pump back together. Do it in that order. I know it spins, so we're good. So now, this here. <clears throat> She has this tab here. See that little tab? <clears throat> that tab goes on the flat, <clears throat> on the pump. See the flat? So this tab goes like this. That tab goes to that flat. Got to put our shims in there. sure I got the shims in the right order. Okay. Tab goes to the flat.
Okay. Blue Loctite. <laughs> They're freaking coming out like crazy. Remember, Loctites are lubric uh, lubricants. So blue Loctite, not red, blue. Blue Loctite. Ten millimeter. As soon as I find my ten millimeter, we'll tighten it right up. There's the hatchet. Ten millimeter. I got plenty of ten millimeters around here. All right. Ten millimeter. Ten millimeter. Ten millimeter. Very long, very long uh, bolts. They really need to be long because um, you, know, you want all the thread you can get in these. So this is crazy extension. So I kind of hand tighten these. I could with a little torque wrench, but. I know it so well that uh, uh, I, I, I kind of got a pretty good feel of where I'm supposed to be at with these. Because um, I've done it so much. this pump so much I've worked on things for so long so I kind of know where by hand if I'm at max
Um, so, I keep my impeller very tight. This is very tight to the housing. I don't know what the gap is. There's supposed to be a filler gauge gap in here, but I guarantee that it's 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 tight. The closer you are to the impeller with the housing, the better chance that you have the bearing goes bad that the impeller is going to hit the housing. Keep that in mind. The closer the impeller is to the housing, the more speed you'll get out of it. How much more speed? Probably hardly, not probably maybe even nothing to even worry about. Nothing to even probably worry about. But that's... So now, <clears throat> you put your damper in. What I tried putting in earlier, <laughs> before I torque it down. Damper. Cone. Three Allen's. You can't even see that, can you? No. Put you down here. Again, blue Loctite. This is videos way too long, sorry. But, you know, this is how I put it together. And I know it's right. It's, it's as right as it's going to get. Believe me when I tell you. This is as right as you're going to make it. One thing I could tell you to do is put a grease fitting in like this. And pressurize it with some grease, and that's as good as you're going to build this pump. At least it's as good as I can build the pump. I can't. I can't build it any better than this. Maybe somebody else can build it better, but it's as good as I can build it. I can feel the damper squishing a little bit when you put it together. You can feel that damper being squished between the shaft and the bearing.
Rot roll. Well, looks like I got to do some easy outing. That's wonder swell. Uh, well, I guess there's going to be a part four video. Anyways, I got to get up to go to work. I guess I'm glad I bought those reverse drill bits. Uh, farts. So I guess uh, um, I better get some new screws because um, obviously they've been torqued down too many times because I wasn't even really on tightening it down. So I think I'm going to buy three new stainless steel genuine Kawasaki screws to hold this in. And uh, we're going to make a part four video. <laughs> Great. Yep, these, uh, obviously the screws are, they've been torqued down too many times. I've had the machine for many years and um, and that's the way it goes sometimes. So, um, and I loctited it. Oh, shit. I might have to do this now. I might have to take this apart, get that freaking broken stud out of there now. Well, you guys want to come for the ride? Let's see if I can get this out. I got to get that out right away. I got Loctite on it. See if I got a little something there that I can grab a hold of. If not, what I'm going to try is first of all, I'm make sure the sucker's out. I'm going to try to get you guys up. See that? No. I obviously I broken up broken a bolt. So what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try it. Chisel with a center punch. Well, let me try that first. What this stuff requires is finesse. This is not one of those uh, jobs that um, you beat it with a hammer or something like that. This requires finesse. Gotta get it held in the vice better. So 
somehow, some way, I got it held better in the vice. Okay, I'm not going to bore you guys with this. I'm going to take a die grinder. I'm going to put a slot in it. I'm going to try, try getting it like that. But, all right. Well, they say poop happens. Poor man's garage. I'll get her out. See you soon. Um, I'll make part four video. All right. See you soon.